BMW now has a full electric flagship model of fitting stature in its i range of designs, this car, the iX. It's a large luxury SUV aimed directly at the Audi e-tron, the Jaguar I-Pace and the Mercedes EQC, and it showcases everything the company knows about zero emissions motoring. As it turns out, that's quite a lot. BMW's all-electric model lineup for years solely carried by the little i3 is now taking shape. We've already been introduced to the i4 sports saloon and the iX3 mid-sized SUV. And beyond that, there's this car, the iX, a large luxury SUV, which the Munich maker hopes will move the game on from the standards already set in this segment by direct rivals like the Audi e-tron, the Jaguar I-Pace and the Mercedes EQC. If you're in the market for an EV of this size, you'll probably already be fairly familiar with the three competitor cars just mentioned. And why wouldn't you be? They were launched around three years before this iX hit the market in mid-2021. So BMW's well behind the game here, which is incredible given that the Munich maker was well ahead of EV technology when they launched the i3 back in 2013. You can sense the brand's desperation to get back on track in almost every aspect of this iX, to cause a sensation, to create talking points, to shift people's perceptions towards BMW as a primary purveyor of industry-leading luxury EVs. That's an immense weight of expectation to put on any car, particularly one that isn't quite as sophisticated as it might first appear. The lack of a number in the model name is supposed to designate this model's positioning as the flagship of BMW's i sub-brand, and sure enough, the company claims the iX to represent the pinnacle of its electrification strategy. It's certainly the brand's first four-wheel drive EV. It uses the fifth generation of the Bavarian maker's e-motor and battery technology, and the carbon fibre-rich structure is more innovative than anything we've seen from the company since the i3. But there's still plenty of conventional design from combustion models in the CLAR-influenced platform. And there's no sign here of the advanced 800-volt fast-charging infrastructure that you'll find on top Volkswagen Group EVs. Despite all that, you'll certainly feel that you've got the market's most advanced luxury EV if you own one of these when you look at it in your driveway or slip inside the futuristic cabin. But does it, will it, work as an ownership proposition? You'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find out. BMW describes this iX as a watershed moment in its transition from combustion to full electric power. And it certainly feels that way when you take a seat in the futuristic cabin, the twin screens that float above the curving dash, competing for your attention with a display of graphic theatrics that eventually settle into a simple branded eye. A press of the blue illuminated start-stop button ahead of the crystalline gear rocker switch activates the virtual instruments you view through the weird hexagonal shaped wheel. Angular displays illuminate, usually showing speed on the left and an e-power meter on the right as you snick the little rocker switch into D. You're ready, but for what? Very rapid progress, that's for sure. Unlike some EVs we've driven, acceleration isn't kick in the back aggressive, but the surge of propulsion is certainly very quick enough to gather speed with an urgency you wouldn't expect a two and a half tonne crossover to be able to provide. There's some clever tech undergirding this kind of virtuoso performance, of course, as you'd hope there would be, given that BMW's been refining it since its Concept Active E model of 2009. Bavaria's e-drive technology is now in its fifth generation, centred around a highly integrated drive unit that brings together the main electric motor, power electronics and transmission, all within a single housing. Unlike with BMW's iX3, there are actually two electric motors. 
this being the first implementation of the company's EV X-Drive all-wheel drive technology, a further smaller motor sits on the front axle, activating the front wheels should a loss of traction demand it. We didn't mean to get to the science bit this early on, but the new era fifth generation E-Drive tech on offer here has a great deal to do with the way this car performs. The use of copper wound iron electromagnets rather than the rare earth permanent magnets used to drive older tech EV motors allows the engineers to manipulate this power unit's magnetic field, holding on to maximum power and torque until higher in the rev range. So now you know why an SUV the weight of a medium sized Asian elephant can feel so quick. Next, you're going to want to know exactly how quick it actually is, but that depends, of course, on the variant you choose. Most sales are going to be of the X-Drive 40 model we're trying here, which has a sprightly set of stats, 326 horsepower, 630 newton meters of torque, and a rest to 62 mile an hour capability of 6.1 seconds, en route to 124 miles an hour. The kicker, though, is that rather disappointingly, all this clever tech hasn't moved the game any further on in the area that matters most to owners, driving range. The 257 mile figure possible from a 71 kilowatt hour battery of this X-Drive 40 variant is basically in the same ballpark as rival luxury EVs that have been on the market for over three years, like the Mercedes EQC and the Audi e-tron. And it's 35 miles behind one of equal vintage Jaguar's I-Pace. Which is why, if you're in the fortunate position where you can afford to blow nearly £20,000 extra on your iX, that you're more likely, if besotted by this BMW, to want the alternative X-Drive 50 variant, which essentially uses much the same powertrain you get in the brand's i4 M50 sports saloon. Maximum power with an iX X-Drive 50 goes up to 523 horsepower with 765 newton meters of torque. But you won't feel yourself going much faster, rest to 62 miles an hour in 4.6 seconds on the way to the same top speed because that gutsier iX has to lug along a much bigger 105.2 kilowatt hour battery so that it can deliver a much more satisfying range return, a Tesla Model X beating 380 miles. Other lottery winner level luxury EVs are offered in extreme performance forms too, and of course BMW was never going to resist the urge to follow that trend. So the summit of the iX range is marked by the M60 version, which uses the same 105.2 kilowatt hour battery as the 50 series model, but makes it with an even more powerful 619 horsepower electric motor total output delivered with up to 1100 newton meters of torque. The range reading, 357 miles, is still acceptable and 62 miles an hour flashes by in just 3.8 seconds on the way to an electronically limited maximum of 155 miles an hour. An X-Drive 40 variant like this one will be fast enough for most with speed by stealth that's somehow magnified by the near silence that accompanies it. There are some advantages to that. If off-highway you were to drive, say, a BMW M3 at the kind of warp velocity that's deceptively easy to achieve in this iX, the local neighbourhood watch would be pricking up its ears. But in this extreme SUV, nobody notices until it's too late to do a pavement double take at this car's futuristic vibe. Your iX will be equally at ease in the urban snarl where if you've left the automatic brake energy recuperation system to do its own thing in its adaptive setting it'll switch up the off throttle braking effect to the point where you virtually never need to use the left hand pedal this is all driven by route and terrain feedback blended with sat nav data the auto system upping regeneration when needed for example when approaching a junction while lowering it when it isn't, say, when coasting on the highway. If you want to take control of regen duties yourself, a drivetrain section on the centre screen offers high, moderate and low regen settings. And you'll have the opportunity to switch the gear selector into an alternative B position that's more focused on energy 
harvesting. That regen system, by the way, deals with virtually all speed retardation in this car, aided by clever integrated brake technology, which, as with other tech in this car, takes all the usual traditional components and compresses them into a single unit. Using this system, the brake pedal only makes a physical connection to the friction brakes in an emergency stop or in the event of a system failure. We're getting through this bit by bit, but there's still a lot else you need to know about the drive experience here. The ride quality on offer from the five-link rear axle, for instance, which you'd struggle to better in the class. Ideally, instead of this X-Drive 40 model's standard passive lift-related damping system, you'd want BMW's two-axle air suspension setup. Optional on this 40, but standard on the 50 and 60 models, which comes with electronically controlled dampers. Air springs work on an iX using the brand's offered drive settings, here called My Modes. There are three, personal, sport and efficient, which activate with various pre-programmed cabin lighting and display packages. Aside from damping duties, these are primarily there to deal with throttle response, much reduced in the efficient mode, and the precise but rather remote feedback you get from the advanced Servotronic electric steering rack. With the bigger battery of the 50 and 60 models, the helm steers both ends of the vehicle, courtesy of BMW's usual rear integral active steering system, which applies a fractional degree of extra lock to the rear wheels as you turn. The rears move either in the same direction as the fronts at parking speeds for tighter turning lock, or in the opposite direction at speed through turns for greater stability. Some of the other technological features here might seem of more marginal value. Our comments on refinement earlier assumed a lack of activation of the iconic sounds electric artificial EV soundtrack compiled for BMW by Hollywood film composer Hans Zimmer. The intention here was clearly to create something dynamic and otherworldly, but we can't help thinking that the end result sounds more like an underground train. It's interesting to try, and it rather impresses freshly arrived passengers, but even iX project director Johan Kistler privately admits that it's better to switch the sound effects off and savour the calm. Most of the time throughout our test, we followed his advice. What else? Well, even though this car is supposedly an SUV and has four-wheel drive and air suspension, it isn't intended for the rough road use that you could attempt if you chose a rival Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo EV and fitted it out with the optional off-road design pack that gives you an extra gravel driving mode and a 10mm ride height increase. There's nothing like that here, there simply isn't the ground clearance and you can't raise the air suspension at all in the way you can on the Porsche. In this BMW center screen's drive, train and chassis section though, you do get a useful drive off support feature that makes setting off from rest easier in difficult road conditions like snow or mud. So we've told you that this iX is proper fast, whisper quiet, rides impressively and comes with all the usual EV tricks. What we haven't really yet covered is something that in its own way is just as important, whether this car really feels like a BMW to drive. The answer to that question will depend on your expectations, of course, but what we can tell you here is that this iX hides its bulk better than any other class rival. No small accomplishment for an EV of this weight. That's down to various things, primarily the way that the well-chosen damping settings and the super stiff body shell resist cornering lean, but also the unobtrusive nature of the various stability and traction control systems, the manner in which the throttle's so easy to modulate and the way that the electromechanical steering, though not loaded with feedback, is so well weighted, allowing you to place the car through each turn with confidence. It's all blended with a general handling fluidity that might even remind long-time BMW owners of previous combustion models they've loved and enjoyed. You'd have to be pushing pretty hard to notice the four-wheel drive system's rearward bias, but even so, like the iX3, this car is almost fun, which for an EV in this class is really saying something. 
In short, this iX demonstrates just how much progress this Bavarian maker has made in electrical vehicle engineering, though we won't really see the full fruits of that until the brand introduces its family of Neuklass EV models in 2025. These will feature the company's very first completely bespoke designed EV platform, something that despite the smokescreen of futuristic looks and cutting edge e-drive technology, we don't actually get here. Yes, the advanced chassis of this iX has many EV bespoke features, but it's still like the company's fossil fueled larger models, CLAR cluster architecture derived and therefore a little compromised by combustion principles, hence this model's prodigious curb weight. This being the case, what BMW has achieved here is quite astonishing. By and large, BMW doesn't do beautiful, but it is very much a specialist in striking, and this iX is certainly that. Previewed by the Vision iNext concept car of 2018, this full battery sports activity vehicle is clearly intended to evoke comment. BMW itself calls this a monolith. Your friends might call it something else. Yet it has undeniable pavement presence with a radical futuristic vibe underlined by hard edges and angry looks. It's certainly big, just under five metres long, around two metres wide and a fraction under 1.7 metres high. About the same size, in other words, as the company's X5, which BMW claims shares nothing with this car. It would help this contender's cause a great deal if that were true, and it had completely bespoke EV underpinnings. Unfortunately, it doesn't, sharing basically the same CLAR platform that undergirds the company's comparable combustion models, which enables the iX to run down the same German Dingelfing production line. That's why the bonnet line and the front bulkhead position are pretty much where they would be if instead of an underfloor battery pack, this structure had an engine. Not very space efficient, as becomes evident when you compare this design to the more cab forward stance you get from a car in this segment with a purpose designed EV structure, Jaguar's I-Pace for instance. The other predictable downside to basing an EV on a platform originally designed for a big combustion power plant is weight. Goodness knows how much this iX would weigh if its relatively old-fashioned chassis wasn't mated to an aluminium space frame that supports an inner carbon fibre cage, a lightweight inner body structure that supports composite body panels and gives this car greater structural rigidity than any other BMW. Like the old i3, there are carbon fibre cores for the windscreen pillars and cant rails and aluminium honeycomb door sills too. Plus, in this case, carbon fibre reinforced plastic for the roof, all of it intended to allow this car to tip the scales somewhere near the class norm point of around 2.2 tonnes. Inevitably, though, the iX gets nowhere near that benchmark. Think nearly 2.6 tonnes, 650 kilos of which is accounted for by the lithium-ion battery pack. One day, historians will be shocked that EVs were ever like this. For right now, though, shock is exactly what unsuspecting fast lane dawdlers will feel when they suddenly find this huge kidney grill bearing down upon them at warp speed. It's only there for show, of course, a lacquered panel coated with self-healing paint, which, instead of ingesting cooling air, is actually there to house the various system sensors. Things like the long-range radar and the forward-facing camera for the augmented reality sat-nav. An incorporated heating element ensures that these keep working, even in the snow. Full LED headlights, the slimmest ever to appear on a BMW, can be fitted out as here with the brand's blue-tinged laser light technology and flow into the upper section of this appendage. If you stretch to this M Sport level of trim, you get an accentuated bumper design with these huge dark triangular panels that angle towards the lower part of the grille. 
And in profile, well, the shape may appear a touch ungainly, but it's undeniably aerodynamic with a sleek drag coefficient of just 0.25 CD. That's aided by a fixed shut version of BMW's usual clamshell bonnet and by these polygonal wheel arches, which form an integral part of the body sides, shrouding huge low drag rims, which are either 21 or 22 inches in size and are designed to break predictably in an accident. You'll see these recessed door handles as either another talking point or as horrible dirt traps. And this swept back roof line aims to differentiate the silhouette from that of the boxier X5, culminating in this model branded D pillar. There's a wraparound look to the tailgate with thin horizontal rear LED lamps stretching towards the central BMW roundel in an unnecessary attempt to emphasise this car's prodigious width. The badge incorporates the rear view camera, one of a number of examples of what the brand calls its shy tech disguised technology that blends into the background. Like these black panels on either side that flow into this rather fussily styled lower bumper section. They invisibly house the car's distance measurement radar sensors. Time to take a look inside. Now, the door doesn't open itself as you approach it like it does on a Mercedes EQE, nor does its handle spring out to greet you as they would on a Jaguar I-Pace. They house touch-sensitive panels, which you'll need to activate once you've unlocked the car, possibly with this rather elegant key. But if you're an iPhone user, more probably with your phone's handset using BMW's latest ultra-wideband digital key plus technology. Once this is activated on your iPhone, as you approach the car, phone in pocket, you'll be welcomed by a staged lighting effect using the exterior lights and the vehicle will unlock itself just before you reach the door. Apple customers can use their iMessage service to share this digital key with up to five other vehicle users. However you choose to access your iX, the unlocking process changes these rather smart inner door lighting strip highlights from red to blue. Opening the frameless door gives you an insight into the construction of that carbon fibre cage we mentioned earlier. Swathes of unpainted carbon fibre concentrated within the sills and the pillar. It's all very futuristic. As inevitably is the cabin. According to its maker, this car was designed from the inside out. The focus being on what the Bavarian brand calls its lighthouse interior. It's certainly light, especially with this Sky Lounge panoramic roof fitted, and it's certainly not like any BMW you'll ever previously have experienced. There's so much to take in. This curious hexagon-shaped polyagonal steering wheel is difficult to ignore. Your main point of control is a rocker switch for gear selection, and even in a screen-dominated era, the live cockpit professional setup's gently curving, slither-like joined curve display is unusual. Apparently floating above the angular dash. Strange trimming combinations assault the eyes, these angular bronze inlays and weirdly some kind of wood composite panel around the central eye drive capstan, that available fashioned in crystal, as can be the volume control and the powered seat buttons mounted Mercedes-like on the door. You sit almost Range Rover high, though here, of course, the raised floor is there for quite a different reason. These unusual quilted leather seats with their plant-based upholstery and integral head restraints set upon it. This centre console's a bit different, designed, BMW says, in the style of a high-quality piece of furniture, and freestanding. So there's a lovely open footwell right across the front of the car, a bit like early VW Beetles and Fiat 500s. The top part of the console has the media controller we just mentioned, the start-stop button, the electronic handbrake, and that transmission rocker switch, while the lower part has a big phone charging mat together with a couple of cup holders and the various connectivity ports. All very avant-garde and all very different to BMW's other new era EV, the i4. That model's interior based very much on that of its combustion equivalent. This cabin, in contrast, is very much an event, a clean sheet effort that's allowed the imagination of BMW's designers to roam free with technology that genuinely innovates. Too bright above? Well, the Skyview lounge roof can change its composite to one that's opaque. Too cold or hot outside? 
the IX will sense it before you do and alter the climate system and seat heating or cooling to suit. Talking of heating or cooling, the climate controls, like so many others you might expect to find, have been swallowed up by a heating or cooling screen menu you can access via an ever-present icon at the bottom of the centre display, with temperature controls either side. Beyond this, you're faced with what initially seems quite a baffling array of ventilation options, though actually, with familiarity, it all works quite well, as do most of the other functions on the huge 14.9-inch iDrive infotainment screen, which operates the company's latest generation operating system 8 software with its improved intelligent personal assistant voice control system, very effective, and gesture control, still frustratingly annoying. Your starting point for the use of this central display will probably be the layout we've got here. A system of large tiles, which you swipe to the left or right, with right-hand shortcut options for media, phone and nav. There's a menu option too, this connecting you into the far less satisfactory alternative starting display, which gives you a confusing layout full of tiny icons. Unseparated in importance, so rarely used apps command the same screen space as a drivetrain and chassis section you'll need to activate every day. However you access all the media functions, there's an awful lot to get to grips with. Some of the functions are properly cutting edge. The 5G Wi-Fi hotspot, for instance, ideal for TikTok-obsessed grandchildren. And some are slightly questionable, like the optional interior camera, which gives you in-car CCTV. BMW calls it a security monitor, but divorce lawyers across the globe will gleefully seize upon its possibilities. Quite a few features require access via a BMW ID, which you'll have if you're using the My BMW app, but which you can also add to another smartphone. So personal interior settings and activated features can be instantly communicated to the car whenever you're driving it. And you can add to that menu of features in the course of your ownership life, thanks to over-the-air updates and extra tech that can be purchased via the BMW Connected Drive store. Not that too much extra will be needed. A head-up display is standard, so is a Harman Kardon surround sound audio system, though you'll be tempted by the available 4D audio diamond surround upgrade, which uses bass shakers in these front seats. The 12.3-inch instrument cluster display screen innovates too. In the past, we've criticised BMW instrument screens for confusing design and a lack of customization options. The absence of full screen mapping, for instance. This display is much better. There are three selectable layout options accessible via a little cog designated button next to this Tesla style rotating switch on the right hand wheel spoke. These different layouts gradually increase the size of the customizable features that display in the middle of the screen, accessible via a selectable content menu. Choose from a digital speedo, energy consumption info, range prediction, a parking display, a compass and your audio preferences. Sat-nav mapping can display too, and though even with the broadest layout option selected, it isn't quite full screen, it'll be detailed enough when complemented by the right head-up display setting and with full use of BMW's latest augmented reality nav system tech, which brings key journeying features directly into your view. Enough on media tech, what about practicalities? Well, the glove box isn't very big and is mostly taken up by a handbook you don't really need because of the online handbook provided by the central screen. There are no felt or rubber bases for the door bins, so things you put in them will slide about, but the bins are at least large, nicely backlit, and come with angled bottle holders. BMW has forgotten an overhead sunglasses compartment, but you get ticket clips in both sun visors, and there's a deep twin-lidded box between the seats with an inset shelf. Plus, of course, the features we mentioned earlier in the lower part of this centre console, which include two USB-C ports and a 12-volt socket. What else? Build quality from the Dingolfing factory in Lower Bavaria is difficult to fault. Neat additions include a nanofiber air purifying filter for the climate system and eco touches include FSC certified wood, leather tanned with olive leaf extracts and floor coverings and mats made from recycled fishing nets. Those quilted seats are brilliantly supportive and include powered adjustment 
heating and lumbar support. While all-round visibility to the front and sides is aided by the low window line. The view isn't quite as good over your shoulder, but that's helped by a reversing camera and all-round sensors, together with a reversing assistant, which, when you're pulling out of a space, can automatically take you out along the same turning trajectory you used to enter it. Finally, there's the question of getting out. When first you do this, you'll search around in vain for the usual door handle. Here instead, there's a button. If you think the EV era ought to be different, this will be just another feature that'll please you. Right, let's move rearwards. Now, despite the fact that there's over three metres between the axles here, BMW has elected not to make this a seven-seater. So you'll need to choose a Tesla Model X in this class if that's what you need. Still, that decision ought to benefit backseat room. And sure enough, it feels properly spacious back here, aided by these rear quarter-light windows and the kind of completely flat floor that you'd have to do without in rival Porsche Taycan or Audi e-tron GT models, where the centre transmission tunnel, banished here, is excessively high. If you've opted for that big panoramic roof we mentioned earlier, it stretches right back over you and doesn't seem to impinge much on the generous levels of headroom. Because the floor isn't inset with little so-called foot garages, the insets into the lower EV floor plan that you'd get with the rival VW Group luxury EVs just mentioned, your feet are positioned a little higher, but there's plenty of knee space. And unlike with rivals, you don't have to pay extra for rear seat climate controls, which sit beneath these twin central vents. There's no facility to slide or recline this rear bench, but otherwise you're properly looked after back here. The race style seat backs have two USB-C ports on each side, plus attachment points under a flap and spring loaded pockets. Plus you get twin overhead reading lights and armrest with pop out cup holders, coat hooks in the B-pillars and further vents in the B-pillars. Plus, there's storage space in the door bins, though angled bottle holders take up most of it. Let's finish with a look in the boot. Now, given nearly five metres of body length, you'd hope for plenty of luggage capacity here. Actually, the powered tailgate with its two-piece parcel shelf rises to reveal a 500 litre space. Not bad, might be your initial thought, until you check rival stats and realise that this is pretty much the same as you get from a Jaguar I-Pace or a Mercedes EQC, and they're both significantly smaller SUVs. So is Audi's rival e-tron Sportback, which gives you 615 litres. A conventional BMW X5 is 31 millimetres shorter than an iX, but can still give you much more room back here, up to 650 litres. Though that model's aided by the kind of sliding rear bench you can't have here. And you can't have it for the same reason you can't have a third seating row in this car, because the EV drivetrain pushes the floor level up so high, which of course accounts for that slightly disappointing luggage capacity figure and makes it a bit of a trial to lift heavy items up into this load area. But if you can cope with that, it's likely that the capacity figure will be more than sufficient for your needs. It is, after all, 54 litres more than you'd get from this BMW's closest market rival, the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, a car that also gives you much less underfloor space to store your charging leads. Here, you get this very decently sized lower compartment that can easily swallow both of the chunky cables. But, as usual on an EV, there's no space down here for any sort of spare wheel. With that in mind, why won't EV makers specify their cars with run-flat tyres? You'll have to ask your dealer that. The main boot area is very usable and you're a bit more protected when opening the tailgate on a busy road at night by these integrated outer lights that are inset into the carbon fibre structure and reveal themselves when the hatch raises, a bit like those on an Audi Q5. Nighttime loading is also aided by these LED lights that shine down into the cargo area from the inner part of the tailgate. An integrated warning triangle is alongside. Uh, we'd like this tailgate to open a bit higher though. Taller folk will have to duck a little beneath it when the car is backed up against a wall. The boot itself has bright LED lights on either side, plus four silver tie-down points, an elasticated strap on the left, and a bag hook and a 12-volt socket on the right. 
There's also a flexible 40-20-40 seatback split so that long items like skis can be slid forward into the cabin between a couple of rear seated passengers. If you need more space, then activating these cargo sidewall catches flattens the main part of the rear bench. There are also little buttons just inside the rear doors that do the same thing, and that frees up 1,750 litres of space. We ought not to have finished at this point. Purpose-designed EVs of this size should, after all, have a further small luggage area in the space freed up by the lack of an engine beneath the bonnet. Most of them do, but the iX doesn't. Yet another giveaway to the lack of completely bespoke EV underpinnings beneath all this futuristic panel work. Instead, for the first time in a modern BMW, its clamshell-style bonnet remains firmly fixed shut. And if you're wondering where that leaves you when it's time to replenish the windscreen washer bottle, well, that's accessed via the BMW emblem above the grill. From the launch of this iX in late 2021, BMW was asking from around £70,000 for the entry-level iX xDrive 40 Sport version of this car, that model available in this plusher M Sport form for £3,000 more. In both cases, you get a 71 kilowatt hour battery, a 326 horsepower total output and a 257 mile driving range. Ideally, though, you'd want to stretch to one of the bigger battery iX xDrive 50 models, priced in base sport form from around £92,000. Again, it's £3,000 more for M Sport trim. With those 50 series variants, you get a 105.2 kilowatt hour battery, a 523 horsepower total output, and a 380 mile driving range. The same bigger battery features in the top iX M60, which is in a price league of its own, costing around £112 thousand pounds. It offers 619 HP and offers 637 miles of driving range. You'll need some perspective on those figures, some BMW perspective to start with. The Bavarian maker's only slightly smaller iX3 EV costs from around £60,000, but that's rear-driven, uses an 80 kilowatt hour battery, offers 286 horsepower and has a range of 285 miles. Closer to the iX in terms of technology is a slightly smaller BMW EV, the i4 Saloon. The i4 eDrive 40 is rear-driven, costs around £52,000, puts out 340 horsepower and has a range of 367 miles. The alternative i4 M50 is all-wheel driven, costs around £64,000, puts out 544 horsepower and has a range of 316 miles. Those are all your luxury EV Bavarian options. But of course, these days, there are plenty of other direct competitors from other brands. Probably the closest rival to what's on offer with this iX is Porsche's Taken Cross Turismo. The Volume 4 and 4S Cross Turismo versions of that model are pitched price-wise between the 40 and 50 series versions of this iX and will take you just over 280 miles between charges. To be more specific, the Taycan 4 Cross Turismo puts out 476 PS and costs around £82,000, while the Taycan 4S Cross Turismo puts out 571 PS and costs around £88,000. To directly take on the iX M60 with that Porsche, you'll need the slightly less SUV-orientated Taycan GTS Sport Turismo model, which puts out 598 PS, costs around £105,000 and has a 304-mile range. The other obvious rival is Tesla's Model X, which in its main dual-motor all-wheel drive form is priced close to a well-specified iX xDrive 50 M Sport model, but can only deliver 348 miles of driving range. It's taken the European motor industry over a decade to get on terms with Tesla in that respect, but finally it's happening. 
If your focus is on the more affordable iX xDrive 40 model we've been trying here, which, as we said, is priced from around £70,000, then you might also be considering two fractionally smaller and somewhat less avant-garde large luxury EVs in this segment. Jaguar's iPace, priced at the time of this test from around £65,000, and the Mercedes EQC from around £67,000. Audi's comparable e-tron Sportback is fractionally smaller than an iX2, but in the 55 Quattro form that you'd need to get a decent driving range figure, it actually costs a bit more than the volume version of this BMW from around £73,000 at the time of this test. There aren't really any other options if your large luxury EV must be an SUV. But if you're not fussed about that and you're quite happy to consider a large luxury EV saloon, then you might also want to consider the Audi e-tron GT Quattro and the Mercedes EQE, both priced from around £80,000. Or if you're considering a more plushly specified iX xDrive 50, then you might also be thinking about blowing around £100,000 on a Mercedes EQS. If, having considered all of that, you conclude that it is an iX that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous BMW has been with standard spec. So, let's take a look at that now. The only core equipment differentiation between xDrive 40 and xDrive 50 models is the fact that with the larger battery variant, as standard, you get front and rear air suspension and integral active steering the latter feature turning the rear wheel subtly in concert with the front ones, either to stabilise fast cornering or to improve your turning circle when parking. Otherwise, the sport spec is common between the two drivetrains. Will the base level of trim be enough for you? Let's see. Sports trim includes full LED headlights, LED tail lamps, shadow line exterior trim, a climate comfort windscreen, power folding mirrors, auto headlights and wipers, parking assistant all round parking sensors, heated washer jets, welcome light door puddle lamps and 21 inch bicolour aero alloy wheels. As for driving stuff, as well as the X-Drive four wheel drive system, which, as we've said, differentiates this iX from its iX3 showroom stablemate, you get a high beam assistant to dip the headlights and the BMW Iconic Sounds Electric package developed by Hollywood film composer Hans Zimmer, which adds an emotive soundtrack to your iX as you drive it. Inside, common features across the iX range include a head-up display, a premium Harman Kardon surround sound audio system and a wireless charging mat. You also get four-zone automatic air conditioning, front heated seats, a frameless rear-view mirror, a rear-view camera, ambient lighting and, in the rear, a 40-20-40 rear seatback split and no fewer than four USB-C ports. Media kit is taken care of by the latest version of BMW's Live Cockpit Professional package, which runs on the company's latest operating system 8 software and gives you a 12.3-inch instrument cluster screen and a 14.9-inch central display. This incorporates a very advanced BMW navigation setup, giving you route guidance with augmented reality, which brings key journeying features more directly into your line of sight. There's a BMW Maps set up to help your route planning with recommendations for charging stops, and this system gives you the ability to filter search results down to fast charging points and even information on points of interest near charging stations. There's obviously a lot more than just navigation to the live cockpit professional package. As you'd expect, it also includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless smartphone integration, which allows you to access digital services like Google Assistant, Google Maps, music streaming services like Spotify and Amazon Music, along with the WhatsApp messaging service. Plus, there's the ability to implement a super-fast 5G Wi-Fi hotspot and to use gesture control for various cabin features, though we've found that feature difficult to master. 
Voice control comes courtesy of an improved version of the BMW Intelligent Personal Assistant system, which learns your preferences and is familiar with your favoured settings, say for the seat heating or the places you frequently drive to using the navigation system. It also responds directly to the prompt, Hey BMW! As brand loyalists would expect, this iX also includes plenty of the brand's really clever digital connectivity features too, including the full suite of BMW Connected Package Pro services. Things like real-time traffic information, which warns you of congestion along your chosen route, and Connected Parking, which offers multi-storey and on-street parking information in selected cities in the UK and Europe. There's also BMW's concierge services, which at the press of a button will give you direct access to an operator who will be able to answer almost any question about your journey as you drive. And the Connected Package Pro package also includes connected music, which offers unlimited streaming of millions of songs in the vehicle from Spotify. You also get in-car experiences, which are one-shot cabin modes able to instantly adapt to the interior ambience to suit your mood. Plus, there's the company's suite of BMW vehicle apps that give you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts for up to four days ahead, and information on highway tolls. In addition, the system can remotely update itself with fresh features and mapping upgrades. And of course, it will read out text messages to you. We'll also mention BMW Teleservices, which can decide when a garage visit is required and automatically book it. And as a customer of this Munich maker, you get a three month trial of a connected teaser package that gives you BMW music, which allows you to export your favourite soundtracks into your car. And if you've owned a BMW before, you might be familiar with the standard remote services package that allows you to control many aspects of your vehicle's operation via your smartphone. And you'll maybe also recognise the downloadable My BMW app, which on this EV you can use to preset charging times and remotely pre-warm or pre-cool the cabin before you get to it. As with other more conventional BMW models, this app can learn your mobility routines, read your calendar and even prompt you as to when to leave for scheduled journeys. It'll get familiar with your most frequently travelled routes and memorise them as future destinations. Plus, the app will help you to find your car if you've forgotten where you've parked it and can remotely lock or unlock the doors. Right, that's covered what you get with base sport trim on either an xDrive 40 or an xDrive 50 iX. But BMW expects the majority of customers to want to pay the extra £3,000 for the upgraded M Sport level of trim we're trying here. As with all BMW models, a lot of that's down to the smarter look you get with M Sport spec. Here, provided by a different style of 21-inch alloy wheels, dark tail-like glass and blue calipered M Sport brakes. You also get an aerodynamics pack that gives the car distinct M Sport styling for the front apron, the air curtains, the side apron, the rear apron and the rear diffuser. You're going to need to like the end result look of all of this because there's not a lot else included to justify the extra M Sport spend apart from an interior anthracite headliner. As you'd expect, the top iX M60 performance variant gets its own unique level of equipment. This includes larger 22-inch air performance alloy wheels, soft closed doors that latch themselves when half shut, the parking assistant professional surround view camera system that slots the car into spaces, and an interior camera system that gives you the dubious benefit of in-car CCTV. M60 customers get a headlamp upgrade as well to piercing blue-themed laser light beams which give a range of 600 metres. Inside an iX M60 there's BMW's interior design in sweet natural leather upholstery package and a thumping Bowers & Wilkins diamond surround sound audio system. Plus you get comfort access, keyless entry with remote tailgate operation and the heat comfort package along with ventilated front seats, sun protection glass and a massaging system for the front seats. 
Our focus here, though, is on the more mainstream xDrive 40 and xDrive 50 versions of this iX. Assuming that you're looking at one of those, what might you want to consider in terms of extra cost options? Well, for a lot of people, the starting point here will be the Comfort Pack, which for £2,200 more gives you powered front seats with a massage function, a heated steering wheel, and that Comfort Access keyless entry feature, which also allows you to raise the tailgate with a swipe of your foot below the bumper. Double that spend and your iX can come with the Comfort Plus Pack, which adds soft closed doors, ventilated cooled front seats and the heat comfort package we mentioned earlier, which not only adds heat for the steering wheel and the rear seats, but also heats the front center console and the armrests in the front doors. We've got the Comfort Plus pack here, along with two other commonly ordered iX option packs. The Visibility pack gets you the BMW laser light headlights we mentioned earlier for a cool £2,000 extra. We might be tempted to save any extra spend for this car's Sky Lounge pack, which for £3,500 more gets you a huge Sky Lounge panoramic glass sunroof, which is fixed, which you can turn opaque at the press of a button if the sun gets too bright. The Sky Lounge pack also includes sun protection glass and an anthracite headliner if your iX doesn't already have it. If you want to go even further and you've really got lots of extra money in your budget, then £5,000 more gets you the Technology Plus pack. The major feature with this is the Bavaria Maker's top audio setup, the Bowers & Wilkins Diamond Surround System, which has speakers integrated out of sight in the head restraints and a 4D audio function using bass shakers in the front seats. The Technology Plus Pack also gives you the interior camera, in-car CCTV system and BMW's Parking Assistant Plus setup, which gives you various surround camera views. For £300 more with the Technology Plus Pack, you can upgrade this parking tech to Parking Assistant Pro status, which will enable your iX to park itself, the car taking over accelerating, braking, steering and gear changing duties. All you have to do is tell it where you want it to go, then stay in the seat and watch. You've pretty much got to specify one of these optional packs to get extras on this iX because there aren't many additional features that can be ordered on their own. Only sun protection glass, a heated steering wheel and the Parking Assistant Plus surround view camera and Parking Assistant Pro auto parking systems. Elsewhere on the list of individual options, you can have titanium bronze exterior trim, which gives you some gold style bling on the front kidney grille. Or if you want more of an eco look, there's a blue exterior trim package, which includes blue seat belts. For the inside, there's a clear and bold interior trimming package that gives you various clear crystalline plastic cabin fittings, as if the cabin wasn't bold enough. And you can specify a Trackstar S5 vehicle tracking system and a tow bar. Yes, this iX can tow, though you'll probably want the xDrive 50 version if you're going to regularly do that, because with that bigger battery variant, the maximum brake trailer capacity rises from 2,100 kilos to 2,500 kilos. What else? Well, bear in mind that you'll almost certainly need to pay your BMW dealer more for your choice of paint colour. The only standard shade is solid alpine white. There are five other metallic options. We've got phytonic blue here. There's also a darker 21 inch wheel design style available, or you could upgrade to the larger 22 inch individual aero wheel rims that we've got here. In terms of interior design, most iXs are ordered with BMW's Atelier package, which gives you the choice of leather upholstery in black, oyster white or mocha brown. Alternatively, at extra cost, there's the more eco-themed grey black loft upholstery package, or you can have nicer sweet leather in dark amido or brown castanea. Enough with standard kit and options, let's finish with a look at safety provision. Now, safety is, as you'd expect from BMW, very well accounted for, hence this car's full house five-star Euro NCAP safety rating. There's lots of camera safety stuff. Headlined, as usual, by BMW's Active Guard system, which is based around front collision warning technology. 
At over 30 miles an hour, the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential collision hazards. And if one is detected, you'll be warned and the brakes preconditioned for maximum effectiveness. Should you be travelling at under 30 miles an hour and be not responding to a detected hazard, the brakes will automatically be applied, reducing the severity of any resulting accident and hopefully alleviating it altogether. Before we brief you on all the other camera safety features, we should also underline the fact that all the safety basics are here well covered off too, which means twin front side and curtain airbags, plus front and rear isofix child seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control, primarily DSC plus stability control and DTC traction control. There's plenty of braking peace of mind too with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, CBC or cornering brake control, and a neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Panic stops are aided by a brake assist system and advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. You also get a multi-collision braking function that in the event of an impact will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. Other neat safety features fitted as standard include an attentiveness assistant that monitors you for signs of drowsiness, a trailer stabilisation function that will stop trailer sway if you've a trailer fitted, and hill start assistant to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And there's the BMW emergency call with teleservices system, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. This system not only gives them your exact GPS location, but also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seatbelts were pulled, how many airbags burst, and so on. If you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be, a potentially life-saving difference. This setup's been designed to automatically activate after low-speed collisions below the usual threshold for airbag deployment, immediately after the impact flashing up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistance service directly. All the other safety features you need to know about, including the really sophisticated camera-driven ones, are included within BMW's Driving Assistant Professional Pack. Normally, an expensive technology pack option on other BMWs, but standard here with all iX variants. It includes the choiciest parts of BMW's safety camera and autonomous driving technology, as you're about to hear. The autonomous driving part of the Driving Assistant Professional Pack lies primarily with two elements. There's active cruise control with distance control there to regulate your distance to the vehicle in front and able, if necessary, to even slow you right down to a stop and start you off again. It incorporates a radar-based approach control function that senses other traffic around you and can adapt throttle and brakes accordingly. But the real highlight of the Driving Assistant Professional Pack is BMW's Steering and Lane Control Assistant, which takes its bearings from road markings and vehicles driving ahead through using data from a trifocal camera and a front-range radar, enabling it to work with the driver to help centre the car in the detected lane with corrective steering input. The setup can make corrective steering interventions at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour on an M60, though you still have to keep your hands on the wheel at all times. We found that it works particularly well in heavy traffic and we especially like the brand's active navigation tech. This system uses navigation data to spot in advance when a lane change will be required. In preparation, the system will automatically adjust the car's speed to make it easier to steer into a suitable gap in the adjacent lane. We mentioned that this driving assistant professional pack also includes a whole suite of BMW's latest camera safety tech, so let's brief you on that. There's active lane guidance, which adds subtle steering lock to ease you back to where you ought to be if the lane departure warning system we mentioned earlier detects that you've inadvertently veered over carriage lane delineating lines. In addition, as part of this pack, you also get BMW's Lane Keeping Assistant with Active Side Collision Protection Package, which incorporates side collision warning and lane change warning, all of which stops you from pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot and adds in light steering intervention 
that will ease you back to where you ought to be on the road, should you drift offline. We haven't finished yet either. The Driving Assistant Professional Pack also includes an evasion aid that gives you extra steering assistance in critical situations where it's still possible to avoid an accident. Say, for example, someone suddenly pulls out in front of you or you suddenly have to make a dramatic lane change to avoid slow-moving traffic. Plus, there's crossroads warning, incorporating give-way warning and side collision warning, which alerts you to traffic coming at you from the sides at a crossroads. And finally, as the name suggests, wrong way warning makes a huge fuss if you forget yourself and end up going the wrong way down a one-way street. It's all very reassuring. You'd expect an EV that looks as futuristic as this to use a futuristic charging system. Well, yes and no. We were surprised to find that the iX runs a conventional 400 volt electrical setup rather than the advanced new era 800 volt electrical architecture used not only in top Porsche Taycan and Audi e-tron GT luxury EVs, but also now in more affordable ones made by the Hyundai Motor Group. That 800 volt setup allows the use of thinner, so lighter, electrical cables and quicker battery replenishment if you can find an ultra fast public charger able to sustain a prodigious 270 kilowatt output. But those are rarer than hen's teeth, so BMW hasn't bothered with the 800 volt system, concentrating instead on quickening battery replenishment from the more conventional DC public rapid chargers you're more likely to come across. With some success, an ability to DC charge at rates of up to 195 kilowatts at such stations gives this iX a distinct time advantage over key rivals like the Jaguar I-Pace, the Mercedes EQC and the Tesla Model X. Unfortunately, that 195 kilowatt rate applies only to the bigger battery to 105.2 kilowatt hour X-Drive 50 and M60 iX models, which is why the 10 to 80% rapid DC charger battery replenishment times of those variants, 34 minutes, is little different to the 31 minute figure of this more affordable 71 kilowatt hour X-Drive 40 version, which can only charge at up to 150 kilowatts. There's a bit more of a difference in charging times between the two battery sizes if you hook up to a typical 7.4 kilowatt AC garage wall box. With that, charging from empty to full, you're looking at 11 and a half hours to replenish this X-Drive 40 or 16 hours 45 minutes for the X-Drive 50 or the M60. If you're plugged in while out and about and in a hurry to be off in your iX, it's worth knowing that if the car's connected up at a DC high power station, just 10 minutes of charging will give you up to 59 miles of range in this X-Drive 40 variant and up to 90 miles in an X-Drive 50 or M60 model. All those charging stats are significant. It's perfectly possible to argue that a mediocre range reading on an EV might not matter that much if it's been engineered for fast real world charging. That'll certainly be your BMW dealer's argument. If you point out that the 257 mile range reading of this volume X Drive 40 iX model is some way away from the 292 mile figure you could have got from the kind of Jaguar I Pace you might have chosen for much the same sort of money. The advantage of that Jaguar's bespoke EV platform, which delivers a 300 kilo weight advantage over an iX, really tells here. This iX X-Drive 40 model's range reading is also behind the 274 mile figure you get from an Audi e-tron 55 Quattro and some way off the 285 mile figure possible from BMW's other EV in this segment, the iX3. Better because that car is rear driven rather than as here being four wheel drive. To be fair to BMW, we'll also tell you that the other key iX rival in the large crossover EV class, the Mercedes EQC, can only manage a 252 mile best range reading. If you wanted a Merc EV in this segment, you'd really be better off with the EQE Saloon, which doesn't cost much more and could boost that figure to as much as 410 miles.
A higher spend, of course, delivers a bigger battery and so greater range mileage. If you can afford the extra £19,000, BMW wants to upgrade you to the xDrive 50 model's larger 105.2 kilowatt hour battery pack, and the range reading jumps to 380 miles. That's some way off the 453 mile figure you'd get from the kind of Mercedes EQS that would cost you only slightly more, but that's a saloon. Arguably, a typical iX xDrive 50 customer is more likely to be looking at a comparably priced Tesla Model X dual motor all-wheel drive model, which can only manage 348 miles. For completion, we'll mention the top iX M60's range figure, 357 miles, which betters a Tesla Model X Plaid at 333 miles and decimates the reading of a Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo Turbo at 281 miles. On the road, as with any EV, to get anywhere near the quoted range figures, you're going to need to drive with the most frugal of the drive modes engaged, in this case, efficiency, with its more relaxed throttle mapping. And you're going to need to make the most of the car's proactive and very advanced brake regeneration system. Fortunately, that's not difficult if you follow the advice in the handbook and keep this set up in its automatic adaptive mode, where cameras, sensors and data from the navigation system are all used for optimum regeneration harvesting, autonomously altering the level of brake recuperation according to road conditions. For example, if there's a stop sign ahead, full recuperation will automatically be engaged. Those who'd rather take control of the process themselves will be pleased to find that unlike in BMW's iX3, you're provided here with a pair of brake regen paddles behind the steering wheel, which offer high, medium and low strength settings. It's probably easier though to simply keep the automatic adaptive feature switched on and knock the little gear selector across to B for extra braking effects should you want it in town for instance. No matter how carefully you drive though, a regular charging regime will have to become part of your everyday life here. BMW supplies a flexible charger offering a charging rate of up to 11 kilowatts and a mode 3 charging cable for public charging stations. The battery sizes we've been giving you throughout this test, by the way, are usable capacity figures, which is worth knowing because some competitors still quote gross battery capacity stats to make their battery sizes sound larger than they really are. The 71 kilowatt hour battery of this xDrive 40 model has a gross energy content of 76.6 kilowatt hours. For the 105.2 kilowatt hour battery fitted to the xDrive 50 and M60 models, the gross energy content is 111.5 kilowatt hours. Whatever battery size you've chosen, you can manage its charging either through the My BMW app or through a charging section of the center screen, which allows you to set charging targets and limits, compose a departure plan so the cabin temperature is preconditioned while the car is still plugged in, and even alter the charging fan loudness. On delivery of your iX, you'll be given a BMW charging card, which entitles you to special tariffs operated by the BMW charging network, which in turn connects you into one of the world's largest public charging networks, all of it accessible using just that RFID card, or if you prefer, a provided app. In this country, you'll be able to use charge points operated by BP Pulse, ESB, Osprey, Source London, ChargePoint Network UK and others. High power charging stations via the Ionity network are also part of the BMW charging network. At the time of this test in early 2022, combined, this gave iX drivers access to over 8,500 AC and 1,500 DC charging points across the UK, plus a further 162,000 AC and 11,000 DC charging points across Europe. Finding all these stations is aided by the cloud-based BMW Maps navigation system, which, once you've inputted your route, will give you recommendations for charging stops, plus the ability to filter search results by fast charging points, and even information on points of interest near charging stations, should your passengers wish to take a stroll while you're plugged in. For drivers who use public charging more frequently, BMW Charging offers two monthly subscription packages. 
Yes, we know charging stats are boring, but it's worth listening to these if you're going to choose this car, because both of the packages we were about to brief you on come included free of charge without subscription fee for the first 12 months of iX ownership. For starters, there's the BP Pulse package, which is based around preferential pricing for use of charging stations in the BP Pulse network. There are around 5,500 of those in the UK. And which, if you wanted to continue using it from year two onwards, would cost £7.85 per month. With this package, customers using up to 22 kilowatts AC pay just 16 pence a kilowatt hour. Up to 43 kilowatts AC or 50 kilowatts DC, it's 23 pence per kilowatt hour. And up to 150 kilowatts DC, it's 27 pence per kilowatt. The second available public charging option is the Ionity Plus package, which, as the name suggests, is for drivers who habitually use and want preferential rates from the Ionity charging network for using up to 350 kilowatt DC fast charging. The preferential rate in question is 26 pence per kilowatt hour. For reference, the normal rate is 43 pence per kilowatt hour. And the package price from year two of ownership would be £11.30 per month. Got all that? Good. So, how much could charging an iX save you over the fossil fueled motoring you've probably been engaging in up until now? Well, BMW has an electrified section of its website that tells you that. According to the company's figures, based on an annual 12,000 mileage with fuel costs at £1.40 a litre, you'd pay £2,182.12 to run a comparably sized petrol or diesel SUV. In contrast, based on a kilowatt hour electricity cost of 17 pence per unit, you'd need just £428.40 to run an iX xDrive 40 over the same period and the same mileage, a saving of £1,753.72. Makes you think, doesn't it? Need a simpler summary? Well, we reckon you'd be looking at a charging outlay of around £1,100 for every 20,000 miles driven in this car. A diesel-powered BMW X5 would cost about three times as much in fuel payments to cover the same distance. And of course, you won't only be saving money on energy costs. Driving into congestion charge zones will be free for an iX owner, well, until 2025 anyway, and you should also make savings in VED road tax. Specifically, there's no VED charge to pay for year one of ownership, nor will you be saddled with the premium VED supplement that owners of a luxury car of this size and price would normally be expected to find. More significantly, your company benefiting kind tax rating will be pitched at 2%, which at the time of this test meant an annual payment from around £558 for higher rate 40% earners or from around £280 for lower rated earners. Obviously, the driver will also need to do their part for ultimate driving efficiency. You'll obviously need to keep the car in the most frugal of the three My Mode drive settings, efficient, which restricts throttle response and climate system output. The car has its own efficiency trainer, which offers hints for driving in a very economical manner, while a range horizon screen clearly illustrates the impact of driving style on the high voltage battery's charge level. The content section of the instrument cluster screen has a range prediction section, or in the same place, you can select an energy consumption option. The official WLTP miles per kilowatt hour energy consumption figures are 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour for this xDrive 40 and 3 miles per kilowatt hour for the xDrive 50. What else? Well, in any EV, range figures will fall significantly in really cold weather unless the model in question has a heat pump fitted. A heat pump compresses refrigerant under high pressure. The heat produced then used to heat up flowing cold air. This uses less energy from the battery for the high voltage heater, beneficially delivering greater range. In other words, this tech is pretty essential. Annoyingly, quite a few brands still charge a lot more to give you heat pump technology with their EVs, but BMW includes it as standard here. What about insurance? Well, costs will be high, as with all EVs. The brokers are still terrified of potential accident damage repair costs for complicated EV powertrains. The xDrive 40 model is rated at Group 47E. For the xDrive 50 and the M60, it's Group 50E. The Mercedes EQC and the Audi e-tron will cost you a similar amount to insure, sitting in the group 44 to 50 bracket. Servicing should at least offer an opportunity for savings, certainly over a comparable 
combustion engine model, say an X5 or an X7, this electric BMW SUV does, after all, have 20% fewer moving parts. And thanks to the recuperation management system and this model's very limited use of friction braking, you'll hardly ever have to replace the brake pads. The brand reckons every six years should be sufficient. The brand offers an individual three-year service plan for its i-electric range. Owners pay £15 a month over three years to cover all scheduled maintenance. I told you it was affordable. As with every BMW, there's a tele-services feature that comes as part of the BMW Connected Drive services. You can also access through the iDrive infotainment system. Via this, before each service appointment is due, your iX can automatically put in a tele-services call to your nominated BMW service centre, complete with detailed information on vehicle condition. You'll then get a call to arrange a service appointment. This model is covered by the brand's usual three-year unlimited mileage warranty, plus BMW issues an eight-year or 100,000-mile warranty that guarantees battery performance, though not to 100%. This iX also has 12 years of corrosion cover and a three-year paint guarantee. When you decide to sell on your car, you should find that this BMW's premium reputation will help shore up its value. As for depreciation, well, this iX xDrive 40, after three years and 36,000 miles, is projected to hold on to 57% of its original value. Interestingly, well behind the 62% figure you could expect from the brand's only slightly smaller iX3. For the iX xDrive 50, the residual figure is 54%. Either way, you're looking at losing 30 to 40,000 pounds worth of value in the first three years of ownership. But that's par for the course in this class. About the same as a Mercedes EQC and a little better than the showing that you get from a comparable Audi e-tron. As usual, bear in mind that depreciation will take a hit if you load your car up with too many unnecessary pricey extras. Let's finish with a few thoughts on eco-mindedness. Both the iX and its battery cells are manufactured using green power across the board. And in terms of vehicle use, BMW claims that owning an iX reduces your CO2 footprint compared to a conventional X5 diesel model by more than 30% when charging with a conventional electricity supply and by up to 60% when exclusively green energy is used. The whole zero emissions ethos championed in this case, as with all EVs, is fictitious, of course. The energy to drive this car has to cause pollution somewhere. In xDrive 50 form, this BMW actually has a well-to-wheels carbon contribution of 35.4 grams per kilometre, which is some way from being completely green. But BMW is trying hard here. With this car, over an ownership period of 125,000 miles, the brand claims that the iX xDrive 40 version will have a 45% lower global warming potential than that of a comparable diesel model. And with its production as a whole, over 99% of the waste generated by BMW Group production these days, over 2.5 million vehicles annually, is recycled and recovered. Lots of thought has been put into the potential environmental impact of this car's battery, which is why over 96% of it can be recycled. The cobalt and lithium used in the battery pack is purchased directly by BMW and shipped to a company that assembles them on the Bavarian maker's behalf, ensuring that suppliers can be monitored for ethical practices. This iX's battery pack, by the way, uses 62% less cobalt per kilowatt hour than you'll find in the BMW i3's battery. This gives you an idea of just how much EV tech has moved on since the i3 was launched back in 2014. Though reaching that figure has required the brand to increase the amount of nickel it uses in production, which hasn't been uncontroversial. Still, the general push towards recycling is welcomed, and of course that doesn't just affect the EV drivetrain. Secondary aluminium and reused plastic materials feature extensively throughout the body structure. The interior uses FSC certified wood, leather, tanned with olive leaf extracts and other natural materials. And recycled fishing nets are among the raw materials used for the floor coverings and mats.
The game moves on quickly at the top of the EV segment. It seems like only yesterday that we were marvelling at the sophistication of large EV crossovers like the Audi e-tron, the Jaguar I-Pace and the Mercedes EQC. And just as they moved on the standard originally set by Tesla, so the BMW iX shows just how much more is possible with a car of this kind. Here at a stroke is what the next generation of cars in this class will feel like, which is an impressive achievement given that BMW still hasn't quite managed to create the kind of completely bespoke EV platform that a car like this ideally needs. When the Bavarian maker finally delivers a luxury EV with that kind of structure, two of the downsides here, heavy curb weight and boot capacity restricted by powertrain packaging, will be less of an issue. For all that, though, there's so much here that's incredibly intriguing if you're going to bring yourself to like the divisive way this car looks. The dramatic cabin feels like a real step into the future with enough of a quality feel to justify the prodigious pricing. To drive, there's plenty of the brand's DNA, the iX setting new class standards and excelling in terms of refinement and the cleverness of its adaptive brake energy recuperation system. Much more is to come, of course, in terms of technology in this era. And in half a century, we'll still look back at cars like this as dinosaurs. But right here, right now, for the extremely well-heeled family EV fanatic, this is where it's at. <laughs>